Welcome to Ford High School Weekly. I'm your host, Deanna Mate. This week, check out part two of our conversation with Tulsa Public School Athletic Director, Gil Cloud, and soccer highlights from the Ford Game of the Week. But first, there's big news in basketball recruiting. Webster's silky smooth Anthony Pritchard changed his commitment from Tennessee Tech to the University of Tulsa. Let's find out how it happened. Now we're talking to the man, the man that I like to call Anthony Pritchard. Anthony, how's it going, my man? It's going good. How you doing? Not too bad. Not too bad. So we just coming through, catching up with you. Now the basketball season's over as far as the high school level. How how did everything wind up? Uh, we lost uh, four A semifinals uh, in the state tournament, so that's how it ended. We uh, we had six players, but we made it far though. Six players, man. How did that come about? What, what, tell me the storyline to the season. Uh, just uh, eligibility and stuff like the uh, online schooling and stuff like that. It was uh, like a struggle for a lot of students, so we didn't have a lot of people eligible. With online school and being uh, the situation and some adversity that you guys had to face, how, how difficult was it? It was an adjustment. We had to get used to it. So uh, just being able to be on the Zoom calls and uh, the Zoom and just make sure you're there on time and stuff like that, that was just a, a big adjustment. Obviously, you were able to handle the adversity, and it's good to hear that because that's especially going to be difficult when you go to the next level because they call you student athletes, so you do have to do the student part as well. But I, I heard through the through the grapevine that there were some changes from when we last talked to you about some some recruiting and some some college news. So so what what's transpired there? I did commit it from uh, Tennessee Tech and uh, decided to uh, sign with TU. How did that even come about? Like, first of all, how did the decommitment uh, go as far as talking with the coaches and, and, and talking with your family? How did that even come about? Um, I just felt like uh, the position, like uh, Tennessee, it was far, and like me not having a lot of support out there and stuff like that, I feel like me being closer to home, I have more support. And so me and my uh, family and a lot of other people, we talked about it. and. We made the decision after that took took uh, took effect. What was the recruiting process like for you again? Like when you started, you know, saying that, "Hey, I'm not committed anymore," and now it's time for me to look for other opportunities elsewhere. How did that? Uh, how, how did that happen? A lot of schools start reaching out after that, uh, like the day after, or like a couple hours after that. A lot of schools is reaching out, but. Uh, the main school that stuck out was to you. Now, other than Tulsa, what were some of the schools that were looking at you? Uh, it was school Eastern Michigan, um, OSU, um, Louisiana Tech. What was the difference in your performance or your play or you as a ball player at the, from the beginning of the season to the end of the season where you started getting a lot more attention? The big reason was uh, just we start winning. We uh, The team, like we put ourselves on the map. So that brought a lot of attention to not just me, but to Webster High School. So uh, all of us just playing for each other and just getting W's and uh, showing people that we can play. That made a uh, big part of the uh, recognition that I start, started to get. At the end of the day, you chose TU. You decided to, to stay close to home. What was the big deciding factor? Who was the coaches that were communicating with you? And what was like, hey, TU's the place for me to go? Uh, coach Hayes. Coach Hayes uh, was uh, the head coach was actually talking to me. He was calling me probably like every day. And I felt uh, he was telling me how like it's perfect fit and uh, how I just come in and make a huge factor and how they needed a point guard. So I feel like that was the perfect place for me to be. It's a big difference from, hey, next year I'm going to be living in Tennessee to now you're going to be right here uh, staying in Tulsa. What Was that something that you really desired or is that something that your family needed for you to be closer? What was, as far as the distance, what was what's the difference there? Uh, it was just uh, the spot. Yeah, I feel like just me being close to my family and just me being able to have the support from them and support from uh, the community that I, uh, that I got from this last senior year. So I feel like having them supported, supporting me and just being by my side will help me a lot with the next level. What's the next step that you need to improve on for you to you know, make that transition into college ball? Uh, the biggest is just being able to get to my spots and uh, just getting used to the length that uh, you'll be playing uh, against at the next level and just using less dribbles to uh, get my shot off or get to the paint or get to the rim.
Well, Anthony, thank you so much for coming back with us and, and telling us how the season ended. We kept a close eye on you over here at Your View, and we appreciated everything that you, you did and, and you coming back and letting us know how it all ended up. And congratulations on uh, committing to TU. We're going to be looking forward to watching you for some, some more years to come. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Lucky us. We get to follow Anthony's college career right here in his hometown. Coming up next, Gil Cloud has built a great legacy at Tulsa Public Schools. We'll learn how that athletic director's job has changed over the course of his career when Ford High School Weekly continues. Welcome back to Ford High School Weekly. We're talking with Tulsa Public School Athletic Director, Gil Cloud. With your time in TPS and in Union and, and, and Division Two and, and all kinds of college, what's kind of the the big change from that you've seen from beginning to end to, to your from your career in the from the beginning to to now? What are some of the big changes that you've seen thus far throughout everything? Yeah, <clears throat> the biggest change I tell people all the time. Uh, my first year as an athletic director, the most important thing I did was hire officials hire coaches and schedule games. Hmm. Today, it's raise money, raise money, and raise money. Because <laughs> I don't have to worry about those other things if we don't raise money. You know, all of our schools here are <clears throat> on gate receipts. Their budget comes from gate receipts. We do pay for their transportation and the officials, but every piece of equipment and everything. So we raise money on the side to be able to help each of our schools buy the proper equipment. Uh, this past year, we bought the, the diagnostic Rydell helmets, you know, where we can, after, at the end of the day on practice, the coach can go in along with our sports medicine coordinator and see how many strikes that helmet had on what location in that helmet. Uh, and to me, that's tremendous because now we can serve our student athletes so much better knowing how and when they're hitting with their helmet as opposed to their shoulder like they're supposed to. Yeah. Um, you know, but the, but the financial part of this thing really has, has, has grown, uh, immensely. Uh, you know, we, we have to raise over $150,000 a year, um, uh, to be able to, uh, help our schools. Uh, and we do that. We know we have the golf tournament and we have the tournament of champions basketball, which we didn't have this year, yeah. uh, because of the pandemic. Uh, we have the hall of fame banquet this year. We're, 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 coupling the Hall of Fame banquet with the golf tournament because we postponed that from January to June. So we're going to play uh, golf on a Friday and have the Hall of Fame on Thursday evening and couple that together as a fundraiser. And then we have uh, you know, our Inside Pulse Athletic show that we sell uh, commercial time on. Uh, so uh, we have banners in our stadium and banners in our gymnasium. All those things, the sales part of this uh, has increased so much more. I can remember when I was at Union and we put up signs uh, in the baseball outfield. This was like 1977. And people said, you're proselyting those student athletes. I said, no, what I'm doing is raising more money for those student athletes. <laughs> and uh, that you got to understand that, you know, the world goes around. If I've got more money than you and our talent is about the same, I have a better chance to win yeah. because I'm going to buy better equipment. I'm going to travel better. I'm going to eat better. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have, the whole thing is going to be better. And so you, you need to, it's, it's a shame. Uh, everybody talks, you know, uh, about uh, how much money and the, and the price wars that they have at Division I. Well, I'm going to tell you, it's, it's in high school athletics today. Uh, you don't have to look around uh, at the stadiums that are being built. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reasons for those stadiums, you know, you want to have the best. Uh, you know, in 1976, we opened Union Stadium with 11,000 seats and 500 students in high school. And everybody said you were crazy. Well, not so crazy now, huh? Soccer highlights are coming up soon. But next, Gil Cloud talks about the way TPS has reconnected with sports alumni. Coming up next on Board High School Weekly. Welcome back to Ford High School Weekly. We're talking with Tulsa Public School Athletic Director, Gil Cloud. I wanted to ask you, how do you guys go about raising money and fundraising and getting, you know, the most out of these dollars for the kids? 
there any new stuff that's coming along the way? Well, there, there's a lot of things out there. I think you have to pick what fits your situation the best. Uh, you know, what we look at is uh, the, uh, the the big events, I think, where you focus on big events and have people involved with that. One of the things that we did through the uh, Hall of Fame banquet, which has been a, a, a tremendous success for us, uh, to be able to isolate uh, people like uh, uh, Wayman Tisdale and uh, Spencer Tillman and Tony Casillas and uh, Bill Goldberg, and to bring those people back to Tulsa to become a part of their school. Now, you know, it's a phone call and we can, we can get a donation from them because now they feel tied back to their school. That's yeah. been fantastic. But through that, we formed the Hall of Fame committee. We formed the Legends Foundation, which is a 501c3 not-for-profit. And that makes it a lot easier for us to, to solicit donations to the athletics program because it is absolutely tax deductible. A hundred percent of the money that is given uh, to the Legends Foundation goes right back out to our kids. There's not a there's not a paid individual involved in that. Uh, it's all volunteer. The the ten people on our on our, our foundation board and myself and the deputy director of athletics, uh, Mick Wilson, uh, we don't get a penny off that. We're raising that money for our kids. So between that. The tournament of champions and in, in the golf tournament, uh, the uh, all city preview in football, which this year will be the 77th all mm. city preview. Uh, you know, those things we, we really market, uh, along with, as we, as we indicated, the signage in the, in the gymnasium signage in the stadiums, uh, and then, uh, then our inside uh, Tulsa athletics TV show where we do sell, uh, ad time. Well, I, I want to say this personally, if there's any way that we or I can ever help, don't be afraid to get us on the horn, email, anything, just get us in contact and, and we'll do our best to make sure that you guys have the, the best product to, to put out there to raise the most money for the kids because that stuff's important. I appreciate that. And, uh, I, and I want to invite you sometime to, to come over to our office. Uh, one of the things that we've done uh, here uh, was to be able to epitomize our Hall of Fame so we have a Hall of Fame area here in our office. And then we have uh, our Tournament of Champions and our state championship wall uh, and with a wrap all the way around of former student athletes and so on. Uh, we have people come through every day uh, to look and see their, their mother or father has made it in the Hall of Fame and, and to look at their plaque and everything. It's, it's really a neat, neat place to come to work every day. So one thing I'll really miss, I want to tell you. Yeah, I I was able to check that out when you guys the tournament of champions last year when when it took place and I saw some of the guys being presented as Hall of Famers from from recent years and I was like man that's a cool honor to to have to be bestowed upon you because not a lot of people are are you know high school heroes like that and to be uh, in in the Hall of Fame it's 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 incredible. Well, it is here because I got to tell you when, when you look at uh, when I've told people around the country. Uh, I still have friends all over because of my days in the college business. But, and I said, well, yeah, you know, Wayman Tisdale went to Booker T and Spencer Tillman went to Edison and Tony Casillas went to East Central. Said, all those people went to Tulsa. Yeah. I said, oh yeah. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. You know, I'm going to tell you one really great story. Uh, we, we had uh, John Starks in and uh, Bowie had gone to East Central. Of course, uh, uh, he played 11 years for the Orlando Magic. Mm -hmm. And, of course, John Starks got to go first. We, we went by age and so on. So he got to go first. And he talked about, you know, I used to take Bowie out to Lacey Park, and I would just use him all over the place. <laughs> well, the problem is he didn't talk last. <clears throat> so Bowie gives up, and he said, you know, that's right. He said, Starks just absolutely used me like a stepchild. But let me tell you something. Starks never dunked over Jordan, and I did. <laughs> now, when you have those kinds of people in your midst that have played at that level and know those folks, you know that your program has done pretty well over the years. 
It's, it certainly is. I mean, those opportunities for guys to come back and have, you know, special times of the year where they can see each other. Like, I'm literally going to go play in the OSU alumni golf tournament during the for before the spring game in two weeks' time. And so I'm looking forward to meeting up with so many guys who've played before me and played after me and then guys in my class. So stuff like that is, is very important, and I'm glad that you guys are putting stuff on like that. That's what it's all about. I can tell you, when we had Bill Goldberg come in, of course, you know, he played football at Georgia. Yeah. He was an Edison grad, but of course was in the WWE forever. He came back, was the most gracious individual you could imagine. Uh, two things that he did on, on, on the night of the induction ceremony, he said, you know, because we have about 300 come to the banquet. And he said, you know, I'm pretty nervous because I'm usually in front of about 30,000 people in my tights, but <laughs> up here with a tie on, I don't know quite what to say. So here's a guy who came back from California for this two days. He spends Friday night at the Marriott Hotel and raises another 17000 for Edison Athletics. Hmm. That's what this is all about, to re-engage our, our, our former student athletes and know that we have need and they can help us. So, so with everything that you get to do and all the people that you get to meet, what's the best part of your job? The best part of the job uh, is seeing our young people uh, matriculate academically and athletically become successful. John Wooden used to say, they'd say, John Wooden, you had, you had national championships. Uh, you had national championships 10 years in a row. Uh, what was your best, best group of kids? He said, I won't know for about 10 years till I see how they do it turn out as individuals. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what it's all about. We give a kid the opportunity to play. We give a kid an opportunity to learn and an opportunity to go on with their life. And hopefully the things that they learn when they're in that nine through 12 age group of classes and, and education and athletics, they learn enough to set a foundation for the rest of their life. That's what I hope. And to see them improve, to see them come back and, and visit with us, uh, you know, about how much it meant to them to be able to play and how they did. That's the most important thing, I think. Man, well, well I thank you so much for all your time. And before we go, I have one more question for you. With with everything happening and, and with you about to, you know, graciously retire and, and go on to the next chapter of your life, what legacy do you hope that you've left with, with the – 51 years of in this business and in and, and, and the athletic and, and ed education world, what legacy do you hope you've left behind? I hope that people realize that uh, the investment in our youth is the most important investment we can make. And I don't care whether it's football or speech and debate. Uh, we need to be involved with kids. We need to give them the opportunity to be successful. And that takes a lot of work on our part because some kids need a lot more work than others. But we, but the legacy I hope I left is that if you work hard, as hard as you can every day and do the best that you can every day, then you don't have to worry about tomorrow because you've taken care of it today. Gil Cloud's retiring this summer. Tulsa Public Schools Athletics will be indebted to him for years to come. Next up, we're off to the pitch with Booker T. Washington and Broken Arrow on Ford High School Weekly. Welcome back to Ford High School Weekly. In soccer, Broken Arrow visited Booker T. Washington recently. Here with the highlights from the Ford Game of the Week are Mike Ziegenhorn and Brian Harvey. Started out quickly for Broken Arrow with yeah. the fifth minute on a penalty kick. Yeah, they got on the board very early penalty kick. Low and hard to the goalkeeper's left. Goalkeeper guesses the right side, but the accuracy of the kick beats her. Here we see the equalizer by the Hornets. And again, it's a, a little bit of a mix up. Lack of communication amongst the, the two central defenders and the goalkeeper. This leaves the net virtually open. And she makes no hesitation in putting it in. Then a corner kick, and as we said earlier, my get it is it's a hit. It puts the ball into the net. That was it for a hair. The sophomore in the 36th minute of the first half made it 2-1 BA. Second half scoreless. 
Not a whole lot of consistency in that second half go right here and then Brianna Castleberry. No, it's an excellent goal. Great individual. Everybody was asleep. She was awake and the score ended up three to one. And here we look at the stats and again, very 16 to five shots. Uh, shots on goal, nine to two, seven difference there. And we got corner kicks a little bit closer. And then what we saw in the second half, we saw a lot of fouls. Uh, the, the game was a little bit disjointed and that was due to fouls on both sides of the ball by both teams. But overall, a deserved victory by Broken Arrow. They got off to a great start, an early start. And this is a fantastic goal. As we've said all along, very difficult skill. Takes it out of the air, volleys it first time. A very, very good goal. And here we see the second goal again. EA defense sleeping a little bit. And Mr. Nickel all over it. Toe pokes it into the corner of the net. Makes the score 2-0. Broken Arrow answer back. Luke Nance made it 2-1 at the 27-23 mark of the first half and looked like VA might get a little bit of a spark going into halftime. It certainly did, and as we see, he was left alone at the far post. Everybody caught ball watching. And then it was a bit of a game, and here we, again, we have two players clashing, going for the same ball. They hit each other, and there's the game winner right there. Man of the match, puts the ball into the far corner of the net. But re ooh, relentless pressure by Broken Arrow, but could not find the equaliser. And the score ends up 3-2. to two, And thoroughly deserved on the night. Coach, final stats. Yeah, here and again, it was a pretty even game, but you, shots on goal is three, corner kicks three, uh, fouls more or less even. And I think the moments that really mattered in the game were when they, they, the, the, the poker team really took their opportunities and found the net on, on, on their three shots on goal. Two seconds at the buzzer on the way, that's good. Be sure to check out our podcast on past episodes at yourview.com slash OK. I'd like to give a big shout out to Gil Cloud and Anthony Pritchard for joining us this week. Like I always say, only the best in Oklahoma make it to Ford High School Weekly. And those two are some of the best. Thank you for watching Ford High School Weekly. And until next time, I'm your host, Deanna Mata.